The Stellar Network is making strides toward bridging their protocol with all fiat currencies around the world. Bermuda is anticipating the release of digital Bermuda dollars on the Stellar Network. In January, Ukraine announced it was exploring the same. Joining us now to discuss is Danelle Dixon, CEO and Executive Director of the Stellar Development Foundation, a nonprofit that supports the growth of the Stellar Network. Welcome, Danelle. Thanks so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Good to have you. All right, Danelle, so tell me more about what is happening in Bermuda and Ukraine. The Bermuda Dollar Project has been underway since 2018. What are the challenges? What are you learning from the pilot? So the, the really wonderful thing about both of these projects is that with uh, the Stellar Development Foundation being an open source project, uh, lots of folks can build on the network without even talking to us. And so the Stellar Development Foundation does, we like to work with people. We do all of our, we're a nonprofit, so we do all of our work for free and we're happy to contribute and to do what we can. With both of these projects, we they have done a lot of work on their own. And what we do is we come in to support on any techno technological questions that they have uh, or just you know any questions about ecosystem growth and development. Uh, and it's just been really nice partnerships that we've seen with respect to these two projects as well as others. So I think what we're going to see is more projects focusing on networks like Stellar because they are fast. Uh, they're, uh, they allow very, very low um, uh, fees for the developers. And they we're bridging this gap between the existing financial system and this, these new rails. And so we're enhancing that system rather than supplanting it. And it's a it's a pretty awesome time period to see governments focus Can on these issues. Can you tell us so what is going on in Ukraine? They signed a memorandum of understanding to explore a digital hervinia, but from what I understand, it's not set in stone just yet, correct? Oh, for sure. With respect to us, what we're doing is we're actually helping the Ukraine to explore uh, not just with Stellar, but with lots of networks in terms of how this could work for them from uh, the, the a digital currency that they would like to offer. So we're working on them with helping them. They've done tons of their own research, but we're helping them to move this forward and to figure out if this is where they want to head. And we hope that they do. Um, we hope that it's on Stellar, but also even if it was in any other blockchain, we would be supportive because we think that, you know, the rising tide sort of floats all boats and gets us all out there and uh, gets blockchain and more into the mainstream. So I know that you're doing also some interesting projects in Nigeria, um, and you did, did just mention um, governments and their involvement in cryptocurrency, which, as we know, cuts both ways. Um, there has been talks about, well, more than talk, Nigeria has been suggesting that they, you know, might be cracking down on cryptocurrency. What do you think is the outlook there, and and in terms of in terms of crypto, do you think Nigeria will crack down on cryptocurrency, or do you think it will continue to allow it to thrive? I, I think ultimately what we're going to see is this really nice partnership between the governments and these private sector with respect to cryptocurrencies and digital assets. You know, the central bank issued a, um, a, a, a rulemaking and it, it really freaked everybody out, I'll be honest. Uh, there was a really strong open corridor between Nigeria and Europe on Stellar, and it slowed that corridor because of concerns. But then we saw the Senate jump in and other uh, regulatory bodies jump in in Nigeria to really say, no, we want to we talk about this. We want to think about it. We want to really engage with the private sector. And from our standpoint, you're absolutely right that it cuts both ways with governments. Uh, the way that we can actually make this work is when there's a nice partnership and governments really explore what the private sector is doing so that all of those fears that governments have about new technology can be understood a little bit better. And that's what we're seeing in Nigeria. So I think it's going to be a really positive development ultimately that we'll see a really strong open corridor there. What are some other emerging markets that you are really excited about just on the cryptocurrency front? Are there any markets that aren't really on, the, on most people's radar where there's a lot of action happening in cryptocurrency? Well, I think if you think about the value of blockchain and the, the notion of it really bringing uh, new tools and new technologies to the unbanked and the underbanked, think about these developing uh, these developing markets. So we see a lot of activity in uh, Mexico, in uh, Argentina, in Brazil, and, and even in Brazil where it's challenging with respect to how you actually use fiat uh, money in terms of in and out. And so we're seeing some activity there. We're seeing, I think that we're gonna see some movement there as well. And then of course, there's like there's so many regions in Africa that are just thriving with respect to these digital assets. So it's really exciting. This is like an amazing time to be involved in this space. I'm really grateful that I am. Hi, Danelle, turning to Southeast Asia, 
Uh, Ripple just acquired a stake in Tranglo. Uh, how do you guys view Ripple in general? I, are, are they your closest competitor? Obviously, you had the same founders, Jeff Je McCaleb. So h how do you guys view what they're doing uh, relative to what you're doing? So the different networks offer different value. I think that, you know, we're really focused on the uh, at Stellar and the Stellar network itself is really it's focused on payments and it's focused on cross-border payments. And that is sort of the sweet spot with respect to Stellar. And, and you know, Ripple has been focusing a lot on foreign exchange and some on, the, on and moving a little bit more now into um, cross-border. You know, I, I think about this as, and, and maybe this is just my days at Mozilla, years and years of recognizing that competition and uh, innovation, competition breeds innovation. And so I look at all of these networks out there that are each creating their own sort of individuality as really important to be able to allow businesses and individuals to make choices and to continue to push that innovation forward. That is such an important part of what we need to see in any kind of new economies and any kind of new technologies. And I think that's what we're seeing here. Do you view XRP then as a security um, and, and is XLM a security? Why isn't XLM a security and is XRP a security? Yeah, so the way that I look at this is what we do at Stellar and, and the Stellar Development Foundation is we are focused on using these technologies and that includes the token. The token is, uh, it's, it's, it's a utility on the about XLM. Uh, and so we it's we focus on leveraging the, the that is a rich currency on the network. Uh, in terms of uh, you can use all kinds of stable coins. Issuers can issue assets that are backed by fiat, that are backed by gold, that are backed by silver. We encourage that. So from our standpoint, XLM is a bridge currency on the network, and it is a utility. Uh, so, so that's the way we look at it, and we hope that others do too. A little more than a year ago, half the supply of XLM was burned. That was about $5 billion mm -hmm. worth at the time. Prices have gone up 10x since then. Was Looking back, was it worth it? Oh, so we didn't look at it from that standpoint. In fact, I had just gotten here about six months earlier at the Stellar Development Foundation. We focused on what the what the, the foundation needed to do to really encourage the growth and development of the network. Uh, and we looked at the XLM and said, what is the, what is necessary for uh, utility and for usage of the network? And so we really focused on what the what SDF needed to do to be able to support and grow that network. It was never looked at from the standpoint of the value and whether this is whether this is worth it in terms of the market. That's just not how we approached it. We approached it in what we needed to do to grow the network, to create those network effects, and to think about this innovation and all these technologies that are building on top of it. Uh, and I no think regrets. that you know what we did, no 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 regrets. Great. All right, Danelle, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate your insights. Thank you so much. It was wonderful. It was a pleasure to be here. Thanks.